Blender is a tried and tested software for many things, especially animated movies. It was used to make TV shows like Maya and the Three, Next Gen, The Man in the High Castle, Westworld, and more. While it's not the industry standard for making movies and animation, it has proved itself to be equally capable as the top applications for animation, like Maya and 3ds Max, simply because it has all the features necessary for making animations. We are going to look at them here so that you can be well prepared and ready to make your first Blender animated movie. I'm not just going to list obvious stuff like script writing or modeling. I want to dive into the more overlooked aspects that you rarely hear about but are totally necessary for making animated movies in Blender or any other application. At this stage, you should already have a script, and now it's time to bring your story to life. You have a vision of how everything should look in your head, but it's not very useful there. So let's grab a pen and paper and start turning your vision into drawings. If paper feels too medieval for you, Blender offers a complete 2D drawing interface that can be used for this. It's one of the most popular features of Blender, widely used by 2D artists. In fact, entire animated movies can be created right here. If you are not going to previs your script first, it is a good idea to spend some time creating a storyboard for your animation. Previs is like a more advanced version of storyboarding, where instead of drawing the story out on paper, you create the story as a low poly, low detail 3D animation from start to finish. This is usually more time consuming as it requires you to make uh, models and animate them. There are programs and add-ons that can help you with previs and storyboarding, like the Storyliner add-on, which lets you draw your ideas in the viewport and from different angles. Storyliner makes it easy to create simple shapes to get your vision and timing right before you commit to anything, which will save you a lot of frustration. At the storyboarding stage, you will likely start your character design process and prepare reference images for the character modeling process. If you are great at 2D drawing, you will have to make orthographic drawings of your characters from the front, side, and back, lining everything up so that the 3D artist can use them as guides when creating the actual 3D model. While some artists can model characters without these images, having these reference images can speed up the modeling process. You may also have to draw other objects, like the main objects that will be featured throughout your animation. Obviously, the level of detail is going to depend on the amount of time you have or want to spend on each stage of your movie. If you're working alone or in a small team, spending a few dollars on some assets can save you days. For example, instead of making every model from scratch, a collection of adjustable base meshes can be a significant time saver for you. This one comes with different designs that are rigged and can be customized to fit the designs you made in your storyboard process. It's just $5 and it's going to save you hundreds of hours. When you have your base meshes, it's time to add detail to them. You can do that by modeling, but most artists prefer sculpting as it gives you more freedom to add detail, especially for creatures. At the beginning of the year, Blender added VDM brushes in sculpting, which let you use 3D brush strokes on your sculpts, and artists have gone wild with it. Instead of sculpting everything from scratch, you can now leverage what others have created to add detail to your sculpts. Before this feature, if you wanted to add details like scales or horns, you would have to sculpt them directly or use 2D brushes that only created flat bumps instead of extruded details. If you want to speed up sculpting, this collection by VK Game Dev has 600 brushes, including ornaments, horns, scales, skin detail, cloth detail, wood markings, and more. Unfortunately, most of the time when you sculpt models, you have to retopologize them as well. The reason for this is that sculpting requires you to subdivide your mesh, and the finer the detail you add through sculpting, the more subdivisions your mesh will need. However, this comes at a cost. Animating and working with highly subdivided meshes is taxing on any computer. It will also be difficult to UV unwrap, texture, and rig, and if you have more than one highly subdivided model, your report will likely become laggy. Retopology essentially involves creating a, a low-poly version of the model onto which the high-detail sculpt is transferred using a process called baking. Add-ons like RetopoFlow make creating these low-poly versions much easier. Some details like clothing and hair are impossible to model or sculpt, especially if you want them to look realistic or behave in a physically accurate way. 
Stylized hair is the easiest to make. It renders faster, and for animation, you can rig it with an add-on like swingy bone physics. It's a bone chain physics solver that will deform your hair and make it collide, swing, and behave like actual hair. It's a technique used a lot in games and can also be used on clothes if you don't want to make a full cloth simulation. Obviously, this has some limitations, like it doesn't work on individual hair strands, but most animated movies use stylized hair anyway, so it may not matter for you. There are tools dedicated to making stylized hair, like this anime hair maker, where you control the hair strand design. You can make it braided, curly, and add more detail. Of course, you can make your own custom hair maker from scratch using geometry nodes, but tools like this are meant to spare you the headache. You can also try hair cards. These are just meshes designed and textured to look like real hair. Hair cards render faster and are easy to use. You just place them on your character's head. It's basically a wig. If it doesn't fit, you can sculpt it or pull vertices to make it fit. Meta Studio has a collection of different hair cards that can be used in game engines as well. If you want more detail in your hair, VFX Grace made an add-on for their studio called Hair Shape Key, which they use for all kinds of animals to make realistic, dynamic fur and hair that can be simulated using physics. As you can see, creating characters for your movies is going to be the most time-consuming task in this process. You still have to make clothes, set up a rig, add accessories, UV unwrap, set up a skin shader, texture the clothes, and animate. These are all tasks that take hours to accomplish. There are tools and add-ons that can make these steps faster, but it's still going to take you some time. Most of the time, what experienced artists do is make the main characters themselves so that they are unique and then you use libraries. But there are artists out there who have made hundreds of rigged characters that can be customized to fit your style. Most of them have some basic animations, clothing, and materials. For example, this family collection by 3D Studio comes with adults, kids, elderly people, and pets, enough for most animations. Animating characters requires more than just a rig. Facial expressions are animated using a combination of shape keys and bones. Shape keys are when you deform a mesh into different poses or shapes and save them. Muscles stretch and fold differently when we are shouting, talking, or making funny faces. Bones and rigs alone aren't enough to capture these expressions and details. Fortunately, making shape keys in Blender is quick and easy and requires no add-on to set up. It's used in lip syncing quite often and is very important for creating exaggerated facial expressions. Speaking of facial expressions, there is an add-on that makes it easy to capture your facial movements and generate shape keys for your character in real time. This can transform the whole animation process into something fun, making it feel less like work. You don't have to do this for every character. You can record for one character and transfer the shape keys to another in just a few clicks. The next stage is setting up the environment. Most animated movies have both interior and exterior scenes. Interior scenes are simple to make and faster to render. All you need are some walls and furniture to set you up. It's the lighting that can be tricky. Having some light gobos to create interesting shadows can be great. Light gobos are just shadow textures placed in front of lights. In Blender, the texture can be fed directly into the light. They make the scene look richer with more detail, depth, and contrast. If they are animated, they can make the scene look more alive and your world larger than what is visible on screen. The truth is, you likely have what it takes to make an animated movie. Where most artists fail is in judging the amount of effort it takes. They mostly underestimate the workload and choose less effective workflows. If you choose the right tools and collect a bunch of assets that you can even use on other projects, you will be one step ahead of most artists. Before you commit to making anything, first look for a procedural alternative to what you want. For example, this Geometry Nodes architectural pack can be a project saver for a lot of projects. It can make bridges, buildings, cities, castles, and more, things that you would likely need in an animated movie. There is also Auto Building, a procedural building generator. When you save time, you have more momentum and energy to work on other parts of your animation. Spend most of the time on making the characters rather than modeling buildings from scratch, unless the building is going to be featured heavily in your animation. Even then, you can start with a procedural building 
and add custom parts by hand to make it more unique. This is what most studios do. They start with a tool that can create hundreds of unique instances of an object, character, or building, and then they add a layer of handcrafted detail to make it unique. This saves you a lot of time and energy. Another area you should let add-ons handle is environments, especially the sky. They do it better anyway. They automate day and night cycles, add moving clouds, stars, cloud shadows, atmospheric fog, and more. These tools are also designed to be physically accurate, creating the most realistic detail. Most animated movies still use realistic skies, so tools like physical starlight and atmosphere can be used for animation and realistic renders. Making animated movies takes a lot, but if you look carefully, you'll see that most of the work has already been done for you. All you have to do is place the Lego bricks in the right spots, sprinkle in your own imagination and detail, and uh, you will have an animated movie in no time.